ahead and record it yourself, I guess. Yep. Now we're recording, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, I want to uh, thank everyone for uh, uh, coming to the session. Uh, it's an um, important uh, goal uh, of our county and uh, to try to increase the, the uh, uh, quality of jobs that residents have. And, and this is a tremendous opportunity that Lord Fairfax Community College is offering along with the state and Warren County uh, to help train people. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Guy Curtis uh, from uh, LFCC. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, we're, we're happy to be here and thank you for having us uh, share this awesome opportunity with uh, Warren County residents and other area partners that we, we work with throughout the year. Uh, so just a little bit about us. Uh, we're Workforce Solutions. We're one of the training entities, departments that are on our Lord Fairfax campuses across um, our entire service region. And uh, we like to say that we simply help individuals as well as organizations start, enhance, and change. Uh, whether it's uh, getting skills ready for a new job opportunity, a new workforce that's coming into town, or new business, whatever it may be. We help them with all those workplace skills to be ready and obviously very relevant skills too for the job market they would have. So before we get into kind of sharing about um, some of the funding opportunities, we want to talk about the programs first. Uh, we've learned a lot about, um, especially on the marketing side, people need to get excited about the programs before they learn about the funding opportunities. And so I wanted to showcase some of the things we've done um, in addition to what the, the college uh, does with uh, degrees and certificates. We serve over 8,000 roughly students a year, as well as 1,200 employers throughout our region with uh, credential uh, professional development and uh, continuing education training. Uh, those classes meet certainly the needs of many different uh, parts of our uh, business community and individuals looking to scale up for a new promotion or an employer looking to um, ramp up their workforce, you name it. So classes from a three hour uh, leadership program to a five-month electrical apprenticeship course, you could name it. So as far as the variation of times and days of the week, uh, we offer short-term training. In many cases, training can be done in weeks and not years, depending on where the student, that individual's goal is uh, set to be. Our programs are offered throughout the year, not necessarily cyclical with the academic calendar of the fall, spring, and summer semesters of the normal college credit. Uh, plan and calendar, but uh, but throughout the year we offer courses. For example, this month in April, May, and June, we're starting courses um, throughout the month and throughout the weeks. And so there's never really a good starting time or ending time, but um, they're offered throughout the year. Many of them are in person at all, at our campuses at um, Middletown Campus, our Larray Page Center, our Warrington Fauquier Campus area as well as Vent Hill. And we do have some other satellite operations too uh, that are developing uh, throughout our region. And we'll also deliver courses on the corporate training side as well uh, at, at a neutral location or at an employer's site. So depending on where, where you are, we can deliver course uh, in person, but also online. We offer hundreds of courses online throughout the year. Some of them um, are face-to-face -face, um, and uh, through the virtual environment, but others are um, at their own leisure of the student's ability to, to complete a course. Very unique uh, to, um, to most programs and situations, there's no admission to getting into our courses. Uh, there's, um, in some cases, there might be an assessment to kind of place a student to figure out where they are, uh, but otherwise there's no real uh, traditional college application process. And so registration is simple. In a lot of cases, it's very similar to an online purchase of, a, of an item or a product. Simply go on to our website, find the course you're looking for, enroll uh, by creating a profile and checking out through a cart purchase. And additionally, kind of the, some of the things we're going to get to later is our financial assistance. Uh, before, years ago, we didn't have much assistance, but now with um, the pandemic and a lot of state and federal support, we have tons of, we have tons of options. And so kind of the best place to really look uh, for our programs, um, depending on if you're getting into a career pathway of, say, for example, healthcare or construction trades or law, whatever it might be, Lord Fairfax Community College offers a wonderful view book to see all the programs that are available. That's our, I would say, our full portfolio of courses. But if you're looking specifically at Workforce Solutions courses, we have an awesome catalog that was just delivered to market recently. And this particular piece will showcase 
all the courses and programs available uh, through us throughout the year for, for these next few months ahead. And the best place to find it, if you can't find a printed copy, you could obviously request one by mail. But uh, visiting our website, uh, lfccworkforce.com forward slash catalog is a great place to see all the upcoming courses available to students. So a little about uh, what we offer. A lot of what we focus on are very specific skills uh, that are credential based. Um, the college itself does a great job of offering degrees and certifications, but we also offer credentials within our division that are very affordable for job seekers. They're, they could be obtained in a short period of time, a lot of cases weeks. And in some cases they stack into degrees that make a lot of sense. Or for example, IT certifications stacking into an IT degree make individuals by far more employable. So credential is kind of a buzzword for me, especially for many others who don't know much about it. You gotta to go to college to get a degree, but there's so much more to pathways nowadays because um, employers see the skills that uh, specific individuals have when they are able to obtain a credential. And one of the great stories too that benefit the job seekers that we see in so, so often, especially nowadays, those who've been impacted by COVID-19, it's one of the fastest ways out of poverty when someone earns credential. We have a success story right now that's on uh, a young mother who was homeless. Uh, she got her phlebotomy technician certification credential, and now she's able to afford you know, rent and room and so forth for her son. So that's one, one of many stories we see about folks getting a credential. And then lastly, some of the benefits for an employer Many employers these days are, are having trouble finding the right um, applicants, and it's because of the credential, the skill sets that they need, and that they just can't find them. And so when you have a credential that's out there, uh, it's, it's industry approved, it's trustworthy, uh, it's backed by those employers who are supporting that particular credential, and certainly it helps them reduce the, the recruitment costs. Because if you see an out resume and application with a given credential, uh, they know how to find that candidate pretty quickly through the search process. So that's a little bit about credentials, and this is what it also means for an individual. Here's an example of, a, of the nursing career pathway at the college. We have a number of different entry and exit points when it comes to a pathway. And many folks actually come to our college because they think they want to get a nursing degree. But obviously in the healthcare environment, there's a lot of exit points and entry points into this career pathway. And so today we're going to be talking a little bit more about the credential side and how those play a factor. But you can see here, as far as getting into an early credential wage range, you know, the average income and annually income goes up as you move down that pathway. But you can see, depending on that person, if they're unemployed or maybe perhaps they're kind of juggling another part-time job or two, it's hard to time out to get a two-year degree. It's, it's gonna take you a while to get there. But for many cases, folks who wanna just start in a career path, getting a short-term credential is a great way to get an entry level position and work your way towards towards degree long term. And so that depends on the person who's out there, whether they're, they're graduating high school, they're ready to get into the workforce, or maybe they're recently unemployed. These short term credentials within workforce solutions are a great opportunity to get started. And they can balance that with other job part time job opportunities or other full time job opportunities, as well as balancing, you know, child care and other other work life balances that someone has to, to manage to go through. So that's just an example of our pathway uh, within nursing, but also what credentials can do for you. So a little more about some of our programs. We offer um, a number of courses and training in business professional development, looking at leadership, human resources, project management, customer service, and they, those serve greatly in our business world as well, as well as individuals looking to upskill and get ready for their next promotion, wherever it might be. Uh, we also have a number of computers and technology IT courses, uh, whether they're just basic business applications in Microsoft, Google, and even in IT, uh, we offer a, a really robust offering of different uh, computer training classes and programs that are very relevant to today's needs in the business. Also healthcare and wellness. Um, another, um, and we were talking about this earlier with Jeff, as far as the opportunity to have pandemic proof training. Many of these programs are so relevant today, regardless of the pan pandemic and where we are in the job market. Healthcare obviously is always in demand, will continue to be in demand. So we offer a lot of credential training programs to fast track folks into those careers. And some other bigger areas too that we are, are rounding out here is the um, industry manufacturing technology environment, very sophisticated uh, mechatronics and manufacturing systems that are out there these days and 
employers are chomping at the bit trying to find qualified job candidates, especially in that area. Uh, transportation is another big one too that we offer within the commercial driver's license and construction trades. Again, all these are, I would say, pandemic proof and still on the rise in terms of the job market because there's always a need of producing a product, building and constructing some type of uh, location or moving a product logistically across our country and within the region. So another area too that we like to mention, we offer fast track career training and those are the credential training programs that I mentioned earlier. So as far as just a glimpse of how many there are out there within our department, uh, we offer over 30 annually throughout the year. And depending on the area, some of these branch off into multiple other sectors, but just kind of a quick glimpse that within healthcare, manufacturing, construction trades, computer, and some business professional development programs, we offer fast track solutions for folks to get into a new career quickly. And so keep an eye out for this little fast track guy as we go along in the presentation and, and certainly within our catalog. So here's a, hot, a quick shot, again, just kind of showcasing some of our in-demand programs in healthcare, uh, nurse aide, medical assistant, phlebotomy technician. You know, over the pandemic and through um, the last couple of years recently, the waiting lists are just, just, uh, just tremendous for, all these, for these programs because we have folks wanting to get into healthcare. They have a heart for service and want to serve um, indirectly and directly in the healthcare environment. And so in terms of looking at some of the job outcomes and the wages, depending on your time and investment, uh, it might be right for a person. Some of the average annual salaries there between 22 and 35,000 a year, which is a great pay based on where that person might be. And it could be a good starting point to getting into the healthcare career path. We also have some awesome uh, mechatronics program. Here's a couple of screenshots of uh, some of our lab area within the Middletown campus. Uh, we just recently relaunched the mechatronics program that's supporting advanced manufacturing and some of the, um, the jobs that are continuing to be posted. I just checked real quick uh, recently this morning about some of the industrial maintenance type of positions that are out there, troubleshooting and repairing and maintaining the various ma uh, manufacturing systems that are in the environments. So if you're, you're into computers and you have kind of a, some tech savvy as well as some troubleshooting kind of general interest, I uh, would highly recommend this. Uh, we have many employers coming uh, still uh, within this area looking for uh, employees directly out of our programs or they're sending folks directly to us because they're wanting to skill them up for, for opportunities within their, their company. So another great um, training program as well. Construction trades, you know, we, we always talk about these are never really going to go away. All the construction going on within our region. Uh, we offer them throughout our campuses at uh, in the Warrington, Middletown, and Lorray Page area. And as well as just um, opportunity to, to learn more about what construction trades does. We'll get into a little bit further, but again, another area that uh, if you're looking for a plumber, HVAC technician, they're hard to find. Even locally, we hear employers advertising on the radio. We'll train you to get you ready for your career opportunity within that company. And so we know employers are desperate for a lot of these positions that are out there. Uh, in addition to um, some of the general construction trades, welding and construction project management round out uh, the demand for construction trades. And probably some of the, the hottest two uh, programs we have out there, and we'd like to showcase some of our advanced simulator training. So just different ways of 21st century training we offer similar trading with our heavy equipment operator program and also a commercial driver's uh, truck license program where you can get behind the wheel and really get the experience as well as just the confidence as a student before you get into that heavy piece of equipment. Um, there's just a, a tremendous opportunity to have, have a little fun, but if you have a general interest in getting into these careers, they pay great. We have, uh, they're supported by industries, uh, a wonderful uh, association for heavy equipment operator and uh, so the pay coming out is really good, as well as the opportunity to find jobs uh, quickly. Um, commercial truck driver, tr excuse me, commercial truck driver uh, licensing is, again, still the number one credential within our Shenandoah Valley region. Uh, training is just right down the road, uh, Middletown and in Front Royal off of Kendrick Lane. And so in terms of a training opportunity, looking for a job right away, this could be a great uh, fit for an individual looking to find a job within a few few weeks. Uh, in some cases, the commercial truck driver program, you can train as little as 20 days or even think about doing a part-time opportunity based on uh, when you're available. So two great programs using advanced simulator training. 
And kind of lastly, to round out some of our computer programs, we've really advanced in our IT technical credential training areas and just a, a showcase of a few students working hands-on here uh, within CompTIA, Amazon Web Services. We just recently added Python, ITIL, uh, you name it, as far as the, the opportunity. And we we're kind of also talking earlier about um, some of the opportunities that have emerged because of the pandemic. Uh, this is one a great example here where obviously there's more of a virtual environment we're working in today. IT services and supportive services have tremendously grown within our region. And so we have a number of different employers looking to get uh, students who, who have some of these basic skills into uh, jobs that they have available. And one, uh, one last thing too, we're also providing assistance in some case cases with a few of our programs. On the left there, we have our heavy equipment operator program uh, with a guaranteed interview, as well as our CompTIA IT credential program, a couple of pictures of the, of the interview process prior to uh, COVID. But uh, we offer guarantees because of the demand in certain programs. Our IT credential programs offers a guaranteed interview with up to seven employers. And our heavy equipment operator program, I believe it's 12 employers looking to hire directly from those programs. But in many cases, we do provide opportunity for students to find those jobs. So we're also encouraging local employers as well too, to post directly with us. And so we're looking for ways to connect students. And so there's more, more to, I would say, career um, job career services. And so we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later, but want to highlight two distinct programs, our heavy equipment operator, as well as our IT certifications offering a direct guarantee to interview. So here, here we are today, just kind of talk about the Warren County Scholarship. Uh, I mentioned many of the programs there as far as what's available workforce solutions and the scholarship is available for all of them. So really it comes down to a Warren County resident who's been financially impacted or can demonstrate how someone within their household has been impacted by the scholarship. So if you think through what that scholarship can do, it'll cover 75% of the tuition of those courses and up to $2,000 in total with that individual student. So if you can think through uh, some of those opportunities of what that might mean, um, if you can simply just say you've, you've had a reduction in hours or you've been laid off, someone within your household has been impacted because of the, the pandemic, just simply demonstrate that on the application. You can see a quick uh, example there visually on the screen. Uh, check off the program or if there's a program that um, you're looking for that is not necessarily represented in our catalog or uh, there's an online course that maybe is not showing right away. We can we can try to find that opportunity for you, but it's simply that as far as uh, just demonstrating through the application, we have a PDF available through the website there, lfccworkforce.com forward slash WC and uh, demonstrate um, uh, through that application, getting it over to us and there's some directions there and uh, that would be it. Uh, so as far as that goes, it's a pretty straightforward process, but let's see what that could do for some financial. So, we mentioned also earlier too, there's a lot of new funding options. And I wanna mention this just briefly because depending on the person and where they wanna go with their training, there are also other grants available too. So we have a fast forward grant that is out there. It's a, um, a state grant that's supporting a number of our fast track programs. And this grant will pay um, the two thirds of the cost of the course of a program if they complete. And of course they are a Virginia resident. Obviously that's Warren County residents. And that would be a great opportunity and so you can see a number of the programs listed there within uh, that are eligible for this fast for a grant. I'm gonna show you how the two programs work together here in just a moment. So we have IT, we have healthcare, we have construction trades, uh, commercial driver's license and mechatronics program are now eligible for fast forward. So what does that mean to a Warwick County resident? Uh, there's a couple of price breakdowns. And so because of this is broken down into thirds, we have uh, really three portions of the tuition of a program. So if you can look at our heavy equipment operator program, it's close to $3,000. And with the fast forward price, it's gonna cover everything up to that one third that's remaining. And so what the Warren County Scholarship will do for that Virginia resident, Warren County resident, it'll knock off 75% of that last third. And the math is just simple that they would owe $249.50 to take the heavy equipment operator program. So that's a tremendous savings for the, for the student making it even more feasible for them. And depending on their situation too, uh, there's also an additional financial assistance to cover that really last few dollars left into that program. So 
it depends on that person, how much money they've, in, uh, they've had um, earned from the previous uh, tax year. And so we'll vet that out through that individual. So here's another example, medical assistant. So this program is fast forward eligible and Warren County residents would pay just $266 and 25 cents for that particular program. And maybe less depending on where they are financially with their income. If you found a program like Project Management Professional, for example, um, that was not fast forward eligible, you would just simply do the math on that as well. They would pay 25% of the remaining balance. And so the nice thing about um, both fast forward as well as the Warren County Scholarship, a student could take multiple courses as they go through and depending on the program area. In theory, if someone needed to brush up on their computing skills and maybe want to branch off and go and take their project management professional course, they could add a couple different courses into that $2,000 threshold of that scholarship that's eligible just for them. So they have up to 2000 to spend. And in theory, they can go through multiple courses. Uh, obviously, we, we will probably give some guidance as well too, as far as what would be, uh, what would make the most sense. You know, for example, if they were getting into HVAC uh, apprenticeship courses and they want to go from level one to level two, we'd give some guidance on how to progress through that. But obviously, if you're going into IT and want to jump over to commercial trucking, we would say, hey, maybe that's not a great recommendation to go forward. But it is possible to take multiple courses. And of course, some of this funding, I would say on the Fantic side, depending on where you are, may, may run out by the end of, of June of this year. But otherwise, um, a great uh, opportunity for Warren County residents to take advantage of the scholarship and receive funding. And believe it or not, it's kind of like, um, it gets kind of crazy now. I do apologize for the screen here where it's so, so, so much information, but I think what we want residents to understand is that we're here to help you figure these out as far as the opportunities. And it, it visually shows a little bit about that as far as all the options that are out there. If you're able to get uh, and screenshot or you, if you have your smartphone up to your screen, you can scan the QR code here and visit our website to learn more about the funding options that are out there. But something I encourage uh, everyone to take a look at, you know, but we'll, we'll eventually exhaust those opportunities for you based on your financial situation. But it simply starts with a scholarship application. Go ahead and fill that out, get it to us, to our team. You could drop it off at any of our campuses or drop it off um, by email, fax it, whatever is good for you to get it in so we can find what options might be available to you. And then lastly, as we went back and kind of talked through a career pathway earlier, always put the plug out there because we have many employers that are out there listening who provide tuition assistance. As you get on with an employer and perhaps a scholarship will help you do that initially because of that uh, training you initially received, long-term employers have opportunities to pay for your courses and even through us because some of our funding options that we have. For example, Fast Forward is eligible for some of the employers that we have and serve. And so once you get on board with an employer within our region and they see the work ethic, they see the investment in you and within that uh, given area, it's a great opportunity to have them grow you as well. So we like to always plug that as an additional opportunity to find funding within uh, our area. And then lastly, but we know there's so many barriers for folks to get into some of our career training programs, whether it's childcare, uh, food assistance, rent, household income, you name it. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why folks find a barrier to coming to some of our courses. Many of our courses are offered, you know, one to two days a week, a uh, short burst of time. And it's very manageable to get into a, a part-time job or full-time job in addition to going to school. But obviously there are many other barriers such as transportation that come into play when it comes to finding your way to our campuses and our training locations. And so we work with a lot of the agencies within the region to help connect those services with you. And so as you inquire about a program, first inquire about the scholarship, learn more about what's available to you but if you need assistance in other areas, as far as uh, IT service or a computer or a laptop, you name it, there are some ways to find funding. There's a lot of uh, community partners that are out there that can help support you in getting you to your course and program. And so I wanna kind of qu quickly talk about those just for a few moments, as well as what we have. And really it's gonna come down to connecting with some of our team members and, uh, I believe um, our coach was on here earlier. So Julia would be a great person really to talk to. If you're really undecided, you need that additional assistance to help you out and decide what program you might need. But also um, if you're undecided, a need to kind of just connect the dots, the barriers that you have, whether it's transportation or childcare or other community services, 
Julia will be a great community connector for you to help you understand what those options are for you. So it doesn't hurt to ask and reach out and, and provide um, just a, a helping hand in some way or form that will be able to help you out in some way and help you direct you where you need to go. And then lastly, if you're ready to go, we have a couple of uh, lovely team members to help you with registration. Uh, you can stop in at any of our campuses to get, uh, to get enrolled. Uh, but otherwise, we're here to answer any questions. Um, again, our, our main office areas are within our um, Middletown campus at the Corn Community Development Center or Walk Hall at the Falkir campus. So I'd like to open up to any, any remaining questions that are out there. And hopefully I've hit most of uh, the copy points we want to. Uh, I want to thank you for a terrific presentation, uh, Guy. So thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, I I guess I'll start with a question and uh, let's let's uh, uh, get to some of them. If um, we have somebody um, who registers before June 30th, when which is the cutoff for some of the um, uh, scholarship funding, would they still be able to take advantage of it even though their courses are um, after after then? Yes, in terms of the Warren County Scholarship, it's it's my understanding it'll it's going to go on uh, indefinitely until the funds are exhausted. And so, if, correct me if I'm wrong, if if there's any cases there. But um, honestly, there are some new funding opportunities that are coming forward as of July one. We're we're not going to to announce them yet. Uh, there's uh, the governor just recently signed into legislation, the G3 funding opportunities with um, a few uh, pathways and some of those programs will be eligible for that funding. Uh, but otherwise, um, it, it's not too late. Uh, we'll have we'll probably most likely have funding throughout the year and years to come. But um, there's a couple of specific funding sources that we're trying to drive uh, urgency for because it, it may be um, exhausted by June 30. But otherwise, the Warren County Scholarship is still out there. We'll try to exhaust that first for sure, uh, but um, other funding sources will be available after June 30 for sure. Good. And, and just another uh, comment, and then I'll, I'll turn it over for other questions. Uh, we've been uh, um, talking with the uh, Virginia Regional Transit Authority uh, to increase the, um, uh, the connector and uh, trolley um, stops at your campuses particularly so that um, you know, the evening classes, people can get back to Front Royal uh, as, as part of the process. So we're, uh, as a community, trying to improve the quality of uh, opportunity that uh, residents have. Um, questions uh, from folks? I don't have a question necessarily, but just a comment. Um, I will share this information with our small business committee and get those guys to help uh, disseminate the information out to, you know, as many folks as possible, um, you know, as well as sharing it in our, um, in our avenues. But if there's anything else that we can do um, to assist with the program, uh, we certainly would like to, and, uh, thank you guys for this. This is, this is really, really, um, an interesting thing. And I think it's going to be very beneficial for our local folks. Good. Hey, Guy, I appreciate it. I'm familiar with a lot of this from my previous life, but certainly not the Warren County grant. And it's incredible how little money it really takes for an individual to, to get training that would have a drastic impact on their ability to, to earn a good wage and make a drastic improvement in their life. Um, I, I can't imagine leading a horse to water in, um, in, in a better way than what you guys have done. And shame on anybody who needs this and doesn't take advantage of it, put it perfectly bluntly. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think we may see more uh, enrollment as the future comes along, but uh, I think the challenge is today is deciding whether or not uh, folks can take advantage of some of these opportunities and knowing all their options. Uh, honestly, those who, um, like myself and others who went to college and never considered some of these options and they're, they're great paying wages, offer great career directory and uh, provide really sustainable wages for their families and, and themselves. And so um, we actually, with some of our marketing, uh, someone posted about, well, if there were jobs available, 
you know, it would, this would be a great thing. There are jobs available. I think folks don't realize it because of the training that they receive or don't have. Um, they're, they're employers chomping at the bit, trying to find folks to fill jobs that are empty because there's no, there's no pipeline of skills that are out there. So, so a lot of these programs represent that, uh, pre presents a tremendous opportunity for folks to get into careers that uh, provide tremendous growth and opportunity locally. And that's the key too. If you want to live and work local within our region, uh, this particular scholarship to Warren County, as well as others, help folks do that. And so um, that's where it is, knowing all your options and, and exhausting what those are. And certainly there's going to be a lot of silent folks out there who are just thinking that just, it's not possible. But uh, if you can connect with us, connect with our coach, we can make those things possible, connecting the dots of what you might need to get started. And that's your first step. Inquire with us. So let us know of your interest and we'll try to make ways to figure it out for you. Now, this what I want to pass along. It's just a, kind of a, a, a singular thing. I, I did have a company um, who had expressed that they were having a hard time finding truck drivers. And of course, I immediately thought of and referenced um, what's going on across the street here with, with the truck driver training school. And the guy said, well, what we're having a, a problem finding is truck drivers coming out of training schools they, they didn't say yours in particular, but just training schools in general that are willing to actually load and unload and do more than just drive. And I said, well, I don't know anything about that firsthand, but I would certainly encourage you to reach out to LFCC and to address that element of the training. Um, it may well be that, that they've gotten it across to their graduates that some jobs require that. And, and I just don't know, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he may have reached out to you. And, and with any of the retention visits we do with the manufacturers in the Northern Corridor, um, we always bring up LFCC for, for not only the truck driver training, but for any other uh, training aspect where, where there's a match. So, um, uh, you know, it's a, it, it's a great, it, it's, a, it's a great thing to have here in this community and we're fortunate to have you here. And, and this is just a great pathway for anyone who can stay off drugs, have a clean driving record to make an, an above average wage within literally what, two or a couple, three months of training? Exactly, yeah, a, a lot of minimal upfront investment, not much cost, it's just a matter of their time and dedication and, and uh, the desire to get into some of these careers. To the point of the, the truck drivers looking for, um, you know, the companies looking for right, the right folks, you, before obviously getting into some of these programs, you want to really understand all your options and really know what you're getting into. And our workforce coach, Julia, would be a great person to lead on to. Uh, we do have a number of um, uh, in-demand uh, video series that are out there explaining different career paths and occupations. Uh, so our website does a great job at explaining what you could potentially face. And so Hopefully they understand those options before they get into some of the programs, but, but you're right. Knowing all your options is a, is the great way to go. And um, they're the key thing is, is as well is that they're all in demand. And so I think that's the thought of, you know, even if you're not college bound or college bound, you should consider all your options because in some cases, considering student debt and going to other opportunities in our region, there are just not a lot of opportunities locally like what we're, are, we're presenting today. And so the thought is, in some cases, a four-year school may not be the best idea, but it depends on your career goals, where you want to go, what you want to do, but to live local, to work local, and to prosper well with some great wages and opportunities here, um, you have to know all your options before, before moving forward. And we have the support to do that to help you make that decision. Sounds great. I just have a, a question and a comment. First, I want to say thank you so much for offering this for the community. I think it's just like a tremendous resource. And I was, it sounds like it might be uh, for those students graduating, the upcoming um, seniors. Do you work at all with high schools for um, kids who are, you know, they don't really, like a four year college may not be something that's in their pathway. And do you have a relationship with the high school so that you know you could forward some of those students your way? We do, yes. Uh, we have a, a career coach place in any of the, all the high schools within our region. And so we connect with them often and they actually receive our catalogs as well. So they're well aware of 
of our opportunities coming up. Uh, as far as just some of the ages, um, we've worked with students in, in high schools who um, are younger than 18, uh, maybe in between their semesters and some training, technical training areas they were able to get into. But uh, really some of the funding options, that's where it comes down to. We do accept a lot of um, younger folks into our programs, but the funding is a concern for some situation, depending on where they are, like especially it's fast forward. They have to be on the, the trajectory of graduation and completing and moving on. But yes, the, the folks leaving high school now, it's a, it's a great opportunity if you're still undecided, you know, rather than taking a leap year or a year, just a year off, if, if that's the word I'm sure saying, that um, why not get, a, get into a career path now and start working and see if you like it. You know, those younger ages, it's hard to make a decision early on. And, and honestly, a lot of these programs could be a great way to kind of jump jumpstart your career interests in those areas. So a uh, little investment up front. And so rather than working we would certainly want to support some of our other employers in the region, but if you can take a training program once a week and work a work in a new area like IT, for example, or healthcare, figure out if you like it and if you love it. You know, there's a lot of career direct trajectory from there. So uh, we definitely work with the high school audiences uh, as they graduate or as they're currently in, in high school. Uh, but um, but certainly those who have been impacted by the by the pandemic, folks who've been laid off, folks who just want a career change entirely, who just want to re restart you know when they want to go into a new career entirely so um we have a story that's going to be uh shared later this year about someone who was making six figures they got laid off because of the pandemic and now they're in healthcare enjoying their their career because of who they're serving and how they're performing their job and so uh so those options out there they're out there it's just a lot of them don't get recognized because of that mindset of what these career training programs do you have any kind of program, let's say somebody dropped out of high school. Um, I assume that they would need to have a, a high school diploma to enter your program, or do you have any bridge um, efforts there to uh, help someone to actually come on board, uh, you know, getting their GED? Yes, absolutely. The college offers um, adult basic education and someone can get their GED, but it really requires, there's not really high school um, diplomas required to get into some of our programs. It's a matter of where that employer wants that student to be as they graduate and complete a program with us. So if they're going to get their GED through adult basic education, they could do that. But but as far as just the, the employment afterwards, once they look for employment, that's where you run into the issue if they don't have a diploma or something in place. Right, exactly. So... So that's where it comes into play as well as the certification they go down. So, uh, but we have support and ways to get that student to successfully complete their GED. And of course, getting them into um, some of the training programs to help them get started. What are some of the biggest obstacles that you've found? What are, what are the challenges? I mean, you've mentioned some of them like daycare, like, um, and, and, um, and Jeff brought up transportation, you know, like if you have evening courses, but there's no transportation back into town, um, you know, that that's a challenge. Are there, there are other challenges as well that are commonplace that, you know, um, that you, that just need some solutions? Some, some folks, it's the mindset, I think, too, really. It's like, uh, for example, a lot of the training, uh, it's available, it's one night a week, um, sometimes in the evening hours or on the weekends, maybe two times a week. But the balance of being able to, uh, to balance work as well as life and school is a challenge. So that's one of the big mindsets to overcome. A lot of the programs offer that flexibility. And so I think that's where the folks can realize that they could see themselves through a program and an investment of time. But, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a juggle for sure, especially if you're, if you're the only person making money for the household and, and you know, yeah. others are at home. So I guess it depends on a lot of situations. But Childcare and transportation, as well as just the balance and financially is the biggest, probably three, four hurdles that someone has to get through. But at least the opportunity is there, the possibility is there. Right. And I think that's, that's a imp really important service to the community. I think not only just the folks who are hearing about this, you know, if they're thinking themselves, but it's really also the folks who know somebody uh, within our community that yes. could really be uh, benefited from these programs and having them understand that's where I was, honestly a lot of our programs are referrals to us because they've heard about it through a family friend or coworker, or even their employer so it's something where um, you know, they have to realize they can do it themselves but obviously we, we're here as a resource to connect uh, with them with other resources to make sure they can get done. 
Guy, I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, talk with us here. Uh, we're going to work hard to get the, the message out uh, to residents in Warren County. It's a great opportunity to really take advantage of uh, uh, things that people can do that are going to impact their, their futures, their families, their fortunes. So uh, uh, this is this is great. And uh, we're going to try to do our part and, and uh, make sure people know about it. So thank you again. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Yeah, thank you all. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.